the married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did the fail her. We're we're supposed supposed it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Hello there and welcome to The Talk. I'm Daisy McAndrew. Tonight, a new video of Kate's weekend outing in Windsor sets the internet alight those online conspiracy theories are still rife about the Princess of Wales. A man has been jailed for cyber flashing for the first time in England, and a brand new Bond has reportedly been cast in British actor Aaron Taylor Johnson. Joining me on the panel tonight, Emma Wolfe and Ian Collins, JJ Anasiobi and Jeff Norcott. Now, after weeks of speculation as to her whereabouts, footage has emerged of Princess Kate strolling through the car park of a Windsor farm shop with her husband, William. The Sun published pictures of the pair shopping on Saturday in a bid to stop what they described as the madness of social media. Theories about the princess have run riot since she was hospitalised for abdominal surgery more than eight weeks ago. But the new pics haven't quite quelled the rumours. With conspiracy theories, the footage is of a body double already circulating online. The palace has said Kate will resume her royal duties after Easter, but until then, William will go it alone. The prince was out in Sheffield today, championing his flagship homelessness project and speaking to people facing housing insecurity. He took the opportunity to talk about Kate's early years projects. When the topic of childhood came up, the prince said, we're venturing into my wife's territory. She needs to be sat here to hear this. So clearly from William's point of view, he's trying to portray a business as usual, nothing to see, everything's fine. And you know, no matter what you think of this story, seeing that video was quite dramatic. You're seeing those pictures in the Sun newspaper, it was, to my mind, thank goodness for that, you know, this can stop all those conspiracy theories and all these completely nutty social media, particularly, stories. But actually, it has leaked into mainstream media. But no, we don't seem to have stopped any of the nonsense today. It's still going on. Hang on. You think that's Kate? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes, That looks like Ian. Vicky Winters, who I went to school with. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know. You know but the, is... when you see the moving pictures, it, it looks more like Kate, obviously, because it is Kate. But when you see a still of anybody, it, it's very easy for the, 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 the sleuths on social media to pick it up and go, oh, look, the hair isn't, there's a mole missing, there's an eyelash that isn't as long as it was on the previous one. It's cobblers, basically. But what can we do about stopping this nonsense? But this is madness. What is your, what's your starting point with all your conspiracy? I mean, we don't have Kev here, the, the real conspiracy yeah. theorist. Well, what's the starting point? She's clearly decided that actually getting out and about, being seen as normal, which she is, she's recovering, is the best form of defence against mad people like you who have this... Sorry, idea. why are you bringing me into this? Well, this <laughs> idea, what, where does the kind of... I, I mean, you're representative of these conspiracy theorists with their body double ideas. It's, it's Kate, she's out, she's with William, she's mm. doing what she said, which is she would recover at home, then she would be seen out and about before... Sorry, after Easter. I think she'll probably be better. I think she'll probably be out and about before Easter. We've seen she's already up on her feet. Nothing to see here. Well, I can understand why there's conspiracy theorists, though. Because having a body double is not that crazy. Uday um, Hussein, Stan Hussein's son, had three body doubles. It's quite normal for this to happen. Oh. With, with, but, but, it's, yeah, it's, but that's because somebody wanted to blow so his William head off. Yeah, every yeah, yeah. Body but, double but, it's, but, it's, but it's completely <clears> normal for, for very, very, very high-profile people in public life to have body doubles. I'm not suggesting that that isn't Kate. Mm. But when you compare the, the still of that image of her there walking through the farm, uh, from the farm shop, she looks very, very slight, and then people are going to say she's recovering. And then from people, surgery. and then people are going to say, look at the picture of her in the car. Her face was much fuller. So mm. or instantly, you've got two two pictures of her apparently where she looks very different in the space of a couple of weeks. Then you say about the surgery. We're told it was very serious surgery. But the people saying it was, oh, it's abdominal surgery. How is she able to walk around so free now? So I'm just, all I'm saying I'm is, just comparing, I can understand but, you know, why okay, there's a Come on, I've, JJ, I've been out with JJ, 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 half a year ago. You were a slender looking thing. <laughs> 
the old timber went on a few stakes later. Do you know, don't look at me, do you, do you know, this is the royal family at their absolute best, is just providing us with something else to talk about. <laughs> I mean, if you'd have actually choreographed this, it's brilliant because they're at a point where the share price, let's be honest, it had lost a bit of value. <laughs> and then it's sort of like, will that thing be there anymore? You know what I've done? You remember with Heinz Salad Cream when they said they were going to withdraw it? Mm. But they weren't really. They just wanted to remind you how much he loves Heinz Salad <laughs> If this had been planned, it couldn't have gone any better because now the focus is back on the royal family. Most sensible people are hoping that they're okay. And, and, and actually, we're all focused on uh, Wills and Kate. If we look at the picture as well, again, this is a doing of their own, of their own faults. Putting out a picture that our own very, very, very legitimate press agencies are saying, no, this picture's fake. It's like, well, of course, that's going to fuel conspiracy theories. All I'm saying is, I don't think that, that this is a fake Kate. But if you put out a picture that people can say legitimately mm. is a fake picture, and then you've got a picture of it out one week, a picture out of the next week, and she looks, some, like, looks very different, it's going to fuel but conspiracy Keita, theories. We all look different in every photo. You I know, don't. The angle, everybody can I look don't. different in different... No, that's right. true, the lighting. The lighting, the yeah. photo. This one of them is on a... Is someone snapped it on their on their camera phone. Both the other one was, was a a very badly long, long, bungled, long lens, badly... Pap. Badly photoshopped um, thing that she put out on but, Mother's but Day. But Emma, what I'm saying is, can you not see why, people, why conspiracy theorists can latch onto these things? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I believe. No, I think this is gone way that beyond. No, I think this has gone way beyond normal speculation. This know, is no, absolute you know, madness. But what happened? Uh, it, it re um, conspiracy theory has been around for a long time. People have written books on it. I used to interview these people years ago on the radio, and they, they were always cranks from Wyoming, you know, that you would try and get no, them on on a Sunday night on Talk Sport and see if we could get these characters to come and speak. They didn't exist over here. And then social media happened, and they, they, they exist yeah. in large numbers. And then COVID happened, and that really fueled it. You know, mm. Bill Gates is the Antichrist, and the person mm. that invented the vaccine is actually somebody who, you know, eats rabbits, live rabbits as a sacrifice and stuff like this. And then it's a bit like the kind of tech tax thresholds, how you get dragged into it. So people who were a little bit kind of like, well, maybe that's a bit interesting, got dragged into that phase, and then the next lot got dragged into that phase. And now everything is a setup. It's a world of mirrors. Everything you see isn't quite true. Bill Clinton, you know, he's over at a dodgy island somewhere. Lots of, they're all doing this. They sacrifice things. They do terrible but, things. But the problem with what's happened in the last few days is those cranks have been encouraged to be even crazier by the fact that the mainstream media and the picture agencies particularly have now said that Kensington Palace is no longer a trusted source. Mm. So you've got the crank saying, ha ha, it's not just us. You know, yeah. all these picture agencies well, are also believing this. Um, and of course, today we've had yet another example of this, of the picture agencies, not surprisingly, trawling over old pictures that yeah. Kate has provided the handout, as, as it's called, going through them all to see if she's been at it before, you know, doing the Photoshop. So now today, according to picture agency Getty Images, the photograph, famous photograph, this one, taken by the Princess of Wales um, of the late Queen and all her grandchildren is, yes, you guessed it, digitally enhanced at source. Now, if you look really closely at this picture, you see Prince Louis there. He appears to have been moved back in the picture, that his shirt stripes have been replicated under the arm of the sofa, that cabling on the carpet looks like it disappears, and the curls of Mia Tyndall are repeated exactly on the upholstery. So you can see some more evidence, so-called evidence of photoshopping. Now, most of us would probably say, so what? At the time, that was just her doing, you know, what nobody really cared about. The trouble with the recent photoshopping is that picture was meant to not just be a picture, it was meant to stop all the conspiracy yes, theories. But did it, and it didn't, it made but did it this one, But did this one get a kill notice? Because that was the most exciting thing. I've ever heard was when they said it had a kill not. Yeah, I know. It sounded like a film with Steven Seagal, didn't it? <laughs> no one of those nineties action films, Kill No. Kill no. This, this one Seagal. has had an amendment oh. put on it, so it hasn't been killed. It's been it's been basically sent out with a warning. Now, guess warning it. amendment. That sounds warning more amendment. like a Harrison Ford film. Yeah, <laughs> not not so exciting. The point the point of it was, and I get this. I was trying to explain to people who you know understand we don't work in my industry. But actually, it's about journalistic integrity. So mm -hmm. if you start yeah. just taking on any old picture and don't worry about whether it's been monkeyed around with, then fine, you know, oh, you can't please. do that. Oh, please, for the mainstream papers to be talking about, for, for the picture agencies to be talking about journalistic integrity is an absolute joke. Well, that's just, that's just a stupid comment. Well, yeah. I won't answer that. No way. Um, so the, 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 <laughs> the fact is, the idea that you suddenly, you know, discover that you, you, know, you will take any kind of picture, no matter what's happened to it, 
then they can't be seen to do that. You're right, they do, of course, you know, put cheeky, mischievous pictures up, but they don't doctor them. No, they don't. They, no. they, they don't doctor them. They, they, are, they are often set up. So they're often, they often lack integrity in that they're, ma they're made to look spontaneous when they're not spontaneous Yeah, that kind all. of thing. So they have been monkeyed about in but that. But the idea in, that you've you imposed somebody or whatever, they can't, you know, AP, no. whoever, cannot be seen rude. to take on. I think that was very rude. I think you should apologise. To, <laughs> to who? It's, it's fine. It's just for the media industry in general to be talking about sort of being moral and journalistic integrity when we all know that, you know, if you're Sharon from, so, from somewhere and you, you've got a picture on your... On your well, iPhone, I will defend you the media and journalistic industry in this country as being grand a, a, to the sun or whatever. A, of course, you get yeah. somebody once in a while that does something they shouldn't be doing. But generally speaking, you know, we have incredibly high standards. Yeah. They have to go through legal hurdles. Yeah, we all and know that what the picture agencies didn't like was that you know the control being taken out of their hands. The fact yeah, but that they Kate were given Wills a picture taken... that they thought, hang on a second. So as you just said, bearing in mind this is a bit of a dicey area already. This was exactly. meant to this was meant to show the world yeah. that. Actually, everything is good and proper with Kate, and suddenly you discover that her very... arm is in a different post. The difference is, Kim Kardashian, then, Kim Kardashian... There's a problem there. Kim Kardashian, who photoshops her pictures for Instagram, is not taking those pictures and saying to the press, here, this is a great picture of me, use this. That's not how it happens. She gets papped by paparazzi. The paparazzi do not edit those pictures. They give them to agencies. They give them straight to the... Mm -hmm. to Correct. And then they get retouched later on. In that's, a, see, that's a good yes, comment from Emma. Yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> Moving <that>. on. <laughs> Moving on to our stateside worlds now. As Buckingham Palace deals a blow to Harry and Meghan, by downgrading them on their website. Previously, the site featured full and separate profiles of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, even after they stepped down as senior working royals in 2020. But as of today, the couple has a significantly smaller joint biography at the very bottom of the page, right next to the Duke of York. It's not just Buckingham Palace who appear to be taking a pop either. Donald Trump has suggested Prince Harry could be deported from the US under his leadership if he's found to have lied about drug use on his visa form. It follows Harry's admission in his autobiography, Spare, that he'd previously taken cocaine, cannabis, and psychedelic mushrooms. The first part here about them being downgraded, the fact that they're on, on the level with uh, a royal who admitted to mm. hanging out with a dirty paedophile, mm. is that, that is, it's, I think that's criminal that the royal family have put them on that same level. I think that speaks volumes about what the royal family think about them in their eyes then, and it's completely wrong. In terms of Trump saying he'll deport him, Absolutely, you should deport me. If, if he gets the files and, he, and Harry had lied about it, Harry should be treated like every other normal person, because that's what he is in the US. He may, he may be a celebrity, but he's still a, no, a normal citizen over there. He should be kicked out of the US if he's lying. Can't they judge it on each, you know, aren't they, I don't know how that system works, but aren't they allowed to go, well, okay, yeah, you did mess around with X, Y, Z, but on this occasion, we're going to let it. Well, yes, they can, but that would be very unpopular, particularly given that the US has just as much of an immigration mm. issue, if not more, than we do. True. For them, for the authority, the, the border control, to have said, yeah, you know, anyone else we would have... Can the president even do that? Well, they're, they're, as you know, um, it's not the Resolution Foundation, is, or is it? Well, anyway, the, the right-wing think tank <laughs> that's very, very pro-Trump that has been pushing these freedom of information requests, saying we want to see Harry's visa application. <laughs> I mean, you you got to think that Trump's ambitions have gone down a bit. It's from build a wall. We're going to build a wall, and then we're going to deport Harry. It, did, <laughs> it doesn't feel quite as lofty as it once was. And if you see the interview, I think even he, for Donald Trump, finds himself at a place where he's like, yeah. hang on, do I, do I really want to be say, saying this? But, uh, but yeah, I suppose the law should be applied without fear or favour, and, and that would be one hell of a story, wouldn't it, seeing Harry get uh, accompanied by security yeah. or, or, or cops. Sent on a plane to Rwanda. Don't forget, yeah, it was yeah. Trump, his whole uh, thing of getting in the first time was, he's going to clear the swamp. There's too much corruption yeah. in Washington, too many people are doing law, obeying laws that they want to obey and not obeying other laws. There's, mm. two, there's a two-tier system of, if you're important and you're rich, you can get away mm. with anything. Trump is going to stop the corruption. Prince Harry is a symbol of that today. Because if he had, if I go to the USA as, as a Mexican immigrant and I've lied on my paperwork, mm. they would kick me out in a second. Yep, yep. It should be the same for everyone else. And the interesting thing, interesting. of course, is that there is beef between Meghan and Trump. There has been beef between them for a long time. You know, Meghan's been very outspoken, mm. criticising Trump in the past, and then she got involved with you know, some democratic uh, causes. She did her you know, get the vote out. She's talked about how horrible Trump was when she was... Uh, um, what was it called? Uh, the re re deal or no deal. The deal or no deal thing. You know, And so, so you can understand why Trump might want to... 
put the boot in to Harry and you feel he'll be getting Meghan in a sort of secondary capacity. So I think this one might run and run. It might be rather fun to watch. I, th mm. I think the downgrading on the Royal website is interesting. Um, I see what you're saying about Andrew, and yeah, it is pretty, um, pretty, un uh, pretty humiliating for them to be now downgraded to the disgraced kind of Duke. But it is what they wanted. When they left in January 2020, they, they were leaving the royal family. You can't be in and out, can you? Mm. They're not senior working royals. Mm. They have. They've had their biographies really quite significantly edited. And they've now got this joint, little joint bio, haven't they? Which doesn't mention his humanitarian work, doesn't mention her sort of career, glittering career as an actress. I think it's fair enough. They left. They didn't want to be part of it. Although it does you know? seem, it does seem a bit petty in that it's only a website. It's not like there's a word count that they've got to hit and that they, you know, oh, if but it was I bet a there book, is, though, But I think it I matters bet, to I them. Bet there because is. I think I, I think it's the kind of thing when you achieve a certain level of fame that they'll be measuring it on the screen, seeing which. I'm not, not I'm, I'm not saying that as somebody uh, who's checked whether or not he's still appearing in the trending things, or you know, <laughs> when you've got a documentary out, whether or not it's still on the play and this. How many hits? You know, on literally YouTube? checking that once every hour. But it's the kind of thing, and the more famous you get, I mean, I, I still are they still? Is that still above Edward though, where they are? I mean, both of those. No, are no, no, no. Do you have to get no. another screen for Edward just to keep scrolling? Because <laughs> yeah. he is a proper working royal. Yeah. Yes, no, actually. And no, no scandal. And look where it gets him. Barely in the conversation. Yeah. yeah. But as I say... Um, but they're on there. They're on there, yes. But it's just... It's the... It's the, the looking at that, the aesthetic of it. Mm. This guy... These are the dregs. He makes the paedophile. And he just paid a woman he's never met before a few million quid because she made some accusations about him. But he denies any anything, any anything, any wrongdoing. You're the, now the same level. How as many that. people do you know are benevolent enough to pay somebody that kind of money? <laughs> You're what right. A, what a guy. good guy. What a, what a yeah. dude. God bless him. You should be <laughs> celebrating this man. <laughs> exactly. We need more people like this. <laughs> Coming up. Rishi Sunak's migrant deportation flights face further delay as the Rwanda safety bill returns to the House of Lords tomorrow for a crucial vote. More on that next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat all. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, 
had lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 what did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. And welcome back to the talk. Now, despite fractious scenes in the House of Commons last night, which saw one Labour MP forced to apologise for reportedly swearing at a doorkeeper, the government successfully fended off amendments to its flagship Rwanda bill. Rishi Sunak's relief is set, though, to be short-lived as Labour vows to oppose the legislation as it makes its way back up to the House of Lords for a crucial vote tomorrow. The government had hoped... The bill would receive royal assent before Easter, allowing flights to depart to Kigali this spring. But if Labour, bolstered by cross-bench peers, manages to block the bill's passage in the upper chamber tomorrow, flights could be pushed back until June. Often described as parliamentary ping-pong, a bill must be approved in the same form by both Houses of Parliament before it becomes law. While Rishi Sunak may hope the legislation serves up some positive polling for him and his party, it's clear the Lords may still lob it into the long grass. Parliamentary ping-pong. They really thought about that, didn't they? <laughs> I see what they did. I didn't know that was an official term until today. I mean, yeah. it's actually how they describe this. I cannot, for the life of me, I, I mean, I genuinely cannot fathom why Rishi Sunak is so hardwired to yeah. this. I mean, it's not... You know, more than anybody else, you can listen to James Cleverly and he'll read the normal line. You can listen to David Cameron, he'll read the usual kind of almost press release garb as mm. to what the policy is. But Rishi, every you know, we're going to get those flights going. We're gonna, it's beginning to, I mean, it sounded ridiculous a long time ago because it's not going to happen. And as I said yesterday, the worst, the, uh, the worst optics for Rishi Sunak is that a flight takes off with 35 people on it mm. rather than no flights at all. Because at least he could then say, well, it was blocked by the Lords, it was blocked by the courts, it was blocked by Labour. But if he gets a few dozen people going... And in the other direction, you've got the flights with the others coming back. Coming back. And, and, and the, the, the left-wing press will still do the maths on whatever number of people there are on. So even if it's a full flight, they'll break it down and point out how expensive it is. I just don't get this at all. At all. It's, it's become one of those words. Like, remember there was a point with Brexit? When you used to say Brexit, everyone would go, oh, Brexit. But it's like that, without the sex appeal. You know, it's not got quite <laughs> like, the vitality Rwanda. of the Brexit debate. And I don't know what they think is going to happen, is if they get a flight to go, everyone's going to go, you know what, everyone Everyone doubted you, but I, I'm going to vote for you now because we. Uh, I'm, I feel bad actually, Rishi, for, <laughs> for doubting that you would get that flight away. It's just I, I think that the public believed that we should defend our borders and stuff, but I don't think anyone really thinks this will make a meaningful difference. And, and I suppose in, in a way, you get the sense that they hope there's a sort of form of filibustering that they hope will go all the way to the election mm. and beyond. Yeah. So mm. the, the problem is it's a negative rather than a positive. In that the the reason that he's so obsessed with it is because he knows if he doesn't, he which is, you know, mm. if he does doesn't get even one asylum seeker onto a plane to Rwanda, it will haunt him yeah. throughout the entire yeah. uh, cam election campaign because he kept saying mm. he would do it. And and there's a little bit of me that that is sad about that because politicians are so scared of promising to do anything because they know it's going to come back to bite them on the bum when they don't manage to do that mm. thing, that therefore they don't ever make any promises. So even though I agree with all of you that it was a ridiculous promise to make, this particular promise, I just think it's going to create even more of that situation where politicians just come out with platitudes mm. and never actually yeah, promise yeah, yeah. to do anything because when they fail to do those things, it damages them. I don't think it's a good idea, the Rwanda plan. I don't think it's going to make a blind bit of difference, but I still don't understand why Labour are planning to block it. Are they blocking it because they think it's a terrible waste of money or are they blocking it because they think it's inhumane and we should have... Uh, we should be letting as many people in as want to come here. Or just because they're the opposition. Or just because of the opposition, yeah. they think we've got to say no to something. Because they, no well, they haven't well, come up with another idea, have they? It they can't haven't come work. up with anything. This yeah. Rwanda plan is doing Rishi Sunak, as you've all said, incalculable damage. I mean, every time we hear the word Rwanda, we're reminded mm. just how incompetent the Home Office are under 14 years of the Tories. And really, we also now know that Rwanda cannot take, I mean, what they've got 
the Hope Hostel, I think we talked the about Hope yesterday, Hostel. has 150 beds ready and waiting with the sheets turned down. Yeah. Well, that's 150. We've got, what, 170,000 backlog? Yeah. I mean, the plan can't even get, even if one flight takes off. There's not enough Gideon the Bibles, millions are there, that apart have got, from anything else? Exactly. <laughs> and little soaps. I mean, and, but also the millions that, when you do the unit cost per migrant, it's just, it's, well, it's such a scandal. I'm really angry about the cost that's been that the money that has been what is it, 370 this, million so far divided by and then 171,000 per person per person but they're yep. never going to go so it's probably 370 million divided by maybe 150 can go there is so a way talking to, there is a way to increase the number of migrants who can be um, housed in Rwanda and that would be to kick out the migrants they've already got there, send them to the UK, and then the ones we can send more across to Rwanda. <laughs> that so, God. That's, a, that's yeah. a show where you just need Stephen Mulhern to be hosting that. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it's, it's, instead of wife swapping. <laughs> and and yeah. you can build Asylum a couple of thousand swap. hotels as well. Yeah, but you can't build hotels because the locals get really angry about it and they'll be out there with a pitchfork saying, yeah. no, not in, our, not in our name, get rid of them, put them on a floating boat instead. Okay, Rwandans. so a few Bibby Stockholms <laughs> over there. <laughs> All right, well, sticking with politics now, Labour's shadow chancellor says she'll be as economically radical as Margaret Thatcher. This is in a keynote speech to finance and banking leaders this very evening. Delivering the Mays lecture for the first time, Reeves will say that Britain faces a 1979 moment and that she, like the Iron Lady, will restore growth by rejecting managed decline. But the analogy is likely to rile up members of her own party who've historically been somewhat critical of Maggie and her economic legacy. This isn't the first time the Labour Party has flirted with Thatcherism. Just last year, Sir Keir Starmer praised the grocer's daughter in a piece for the Telegraph newspaper, claiming she was one of the few prime ministers that had affected meaningful change in Britain. Reeves has also claimed she'll be an iron chancellor. So is this party more old, old Tory than new, new Labour? I think this works quite well for Rachel Reeves, actually. She has always been very consistent in how she has wanted to portray herself as pretty boring, very responsible, a safe pair of hands, nothing to be scared of, I will look after the economy. Did you all know she used to work at the Bank of England? Yes, you all did, because she's mentioned it a million times, and that is who she, she wants to be seen as. So I think this comparison with Thatcher fits perfectly with how she wants to be seen. She's even got that sort of, you know, very sort of deep voice that I think she's she's worked quite hard at, at getting that sort of gravitas. And actually, I think that Keir Starmer piece in The Telegraph last year was quite clever. He wanted to annoy some of his party. Yeah. He wanted to create a bit of a storm and a bit of a controversy because he's trying, he's got the Labour vote in the bag, even if they don't really like him, even if some of them think he's too right wing now, they are a done deal. It's the middle of the ground, soft Tories, Lib Dems that he needs to fight for. And this all plays to that to that ploy. Let's be honest, Labour can't lose. I mean, she could stand up tonight at the Mays lecture and recite ABBA lyrics and Labour really can't lose the next election. Mm. Be, I mean, it's good for her, her in a way because she hasn't got very good brand recognition at this point. If you look to her recent yeah. survey, her, her sort of uh, recognition factor was somewhere around the same as somebody, somebody like Lee Anderson. So if there's one way mm. to get people talking about you is just play the Thatcher card. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I do wonder if there's some sort of tipping point where, as you, as you rightly say, the desire to get the Tories out on the left is so profound. But whether some people, it might just be too rich for their tastes on the left, they might say, well, we might go <coughs> green. And if they're in Scotland, well, we might stick with the SNP. I don't I don't think it will be enough to meaningfully affect the outcome um, of the election. But there has been a degree under Starmer where it does feel like they're sort of trolling the left as, as, as well. Uh, like, it's one thing yeah. parking tanks on the opposition's lawn, but the glee with which they seem to be doing it is a bit troubling. I, I think that's, that's completely fair because whilst they're trying to appeal to the general voting public, they don't seem to care very much about the Labour Party members mm. or the parliamentary party. I think, I think they're the, all right. The MPs. I, I mean, it's just a, a, a complete rehash of the whole Blair experience. Exactly. I mean, you look at Rachel Reeves, she's Maybe. arguably economically to the right of Jeremy Hunt, but then Jeremy Corbyn is probably to the right of Jeremy Hunt <laughs> in that respect. I mean, there's, there's, you know, they're, they're trying to carve out when that a story such as that was the front page of the Telegraph. Half an hour ago, the Telegraph wouldn't have touched that. The fact that it sits on their front page, they're not supporting her or anything, but they're giving her that profile uh, means that this is serious. Uh, these are serious times. She's a, a very switched on economist. Whether she's any good remains to be seen. Uh, 
there's not going to be huge dramatic differences. There's no spending pledges ironed out so far anyway by Labour, so we don't know how they're going to afford everything. They've, got a, they've teased a few things. But they're not going to go on a spending spree. They've said that much. But this is about, is she a pair of safe hands? Are Labour to be trusted with the economy? They just need to keep hammering out that mood music, keep it going, keep it going, beat the same drum <laughs> and hope that it penetrates. And like I say, when the Telegraph stick that on the front page, it kind of has. Tony Blair was the greatest legacy from, from Thatcher. Of the greatest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is, for people who, are, who, who eat and breathe and sleep politics, this isn't so crazy. Yeah. But for the average Joe, in Birmingham, who is Labour till I die, they'll be offended that, 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 that the, the party they support is aligning themselves. But they've done the maths. They've worked out. There's, yes, that, there might be some of those people, but the people they really need to garner, the, those that they need to get, are that sort of middle ground lot, yeah. including yeah. Tories, a bit like Le Blair did again in 97, including Tories will go, do you know what? She actually kind of looks all right. They just need that. Yeah. That's all they really need. Yeah. But in the polls, the Labour Party is already ahead of Conservatives on the economy, which is unheard of to be ahead yeah. you know, the economy and defence. And immigration. And immigration, the three yeah. areas that Labour's never been ahead Correct. on. Correct. And they're ahead well, on them now. It is. They can't lose. Astonishing. <laughs> well, coming up... Britain's roads are at breaking point. Now, that's according to a damning new survey of the nation's roads. That's next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of Cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to The Talk. A man has been sentenced for cyber flashing in England for the first time. 
39-year-old Nicholas Hawkes was jailed for 66 weeks at Southwark Crown Court earlier today. He was convicted for sending unsolicited photographs of his genitals to a 15-year-old girl and a woman back in February. Cyber flashing has been a crime in Scotland since 2010, but it became a criminal offence in England and Wales with the passage of the Online Safety Act at the end of January. The offence covers the act of sending an unsolicited sexual image to another person via social media, dating apps, text messages or data sharing services such as Bluetooth and AirDrop. Defendants found guilty of cyber flashing will face up to two years in prison. Well, obviously, it's a good thing that we've caught up with Scotland after 14 years. Right. Uh, it does make one wonder what we've been doing for all this time, if it is such a serious offence. And I think it is. I think we, we've joked in the past about sort of dick pics and what's behind all that. But cyber flashing, we know, actually, is a kind of gateway thing that people do mm -hmm. before they move on to more serious kind of physical in-person attacks. And actually, this guy, Nicholas Hawkes, um, had been convicted already for sexual activity with a minor under the age yeah. of 16. In the real world. To me, this begs yeah. the question, why was he allowed online? What yeah. was he doing? Why was he not, why was he not in prison? Yeah. You know, it, it does sound like a harsh sentence, 66 weeks, but I think probably I don't think it's that's the way harsh we need to go. Or something like that. I mean, to be honest, I think he got off lightly, frankly. Yeah. I don't, it's not a, you know, it's a bit like when people say, oh, well, I just viewed child pornography. I didn't take part in anything, mm -hmm. as if there's no victim involved. I'm yeah. sorry, you know, there's lots of victims involved in yeah. this. It is, if I had a daughter who was sent, I mean, I, I don't know what I would do in that situation. It's horrendous. I think uh, you know, it mustn't be underplayed. Mm. As because it's got, you know, given a sort of colloquial name in the press and described in that way, you know, and, and people have laughed at willies for years. Therefore, mm. it's a bit harmless. It's just a, you know, a little bit sexual, a bit cheek, a bit carry on. It isn't. It's no. a very serious, horrific, horrible crime. Yeah. Well, it's, it's quite so sobering is whenever, you know, I get a new follower on Instagram, if that follower is female, I'd say it's 95% certain that her profile will be set to private. And if it's male, almost 95% the other way. And that's, that's the only reason for that is this kind of indecent exposure yeah, yeah. online. And it is a reminder that the online space, it's just, it's just different for women. Yeah. I, I, one thing I found really interesting about this case and kind of depressing is that um, he had abused two uh, females online, one underage, a child, and one uh, a grown woman. And it comes as no surprise at all, but it, of course it was the grown woman who took a screenshot of this horrible picture that he had sent her and took it to the police. Because, of course, you know, a woman would have the confidence, an adult would have the confidence to a do that. Would, an adult yeah. would know that she hadn't done anything wrong, that she was the victim of this, that it was nothing to be ashamed of, and that this man had to be dealt with, mm. and that he was a danger. A child, of course, would immediately think, oh, my God, I can't tell mum about this or dad. You know, how embarrassing, how, you know, how shaming. I must, you know, I'll probably tell my school friends about this, but it won't go any further, and I'll swear them to secrecy. And, of course, that's how these yeah. horrible perpetrators get away with it because they don't think that there are going to be consequences. So, you know, I mean, hooray and plaudits for the woman in question who got this man put away. But if he had just targeted minors, as mm. so many of these horrible people do, he probably would still be at it. Yeah, and I think that's why the online space is so dangerous for the under-16s, because there are a lot of blurred areas. There's a lot of porn out there. There's a lot of people, like I use this sort of unpleasant term there, but the dick pic thing. There are a lot of people sending each other images consensually. And then it's very difficult, I yeah, think, yeah. for minors to know when it's wrong, when it's not Because there are solicited. kids who send that stuff to each other. Yeah, to each other within and relationships, for, and for that's their choice. For whatever reason, you know, for, for some, in some cultures, it's meant to be some kind yeah. of dating ritual, but I Exactly, that, which, which we find weird because Probably we're old for, dinosaurs. from a boy's perspective, it might be. But yeah, but, really but then to know when it's, an, you know, an offence, to know when it's an attack, I think is very difficult, especially, as you say, when you're under 16. Yeah, yeah, well, well done to that woman. Yeah. Indeed. Now, from prisoners to potholes now. Britain's roads are at breaking point, according to a new report, despite pothole repairs hitting an eight-year high. An annual survey by the asphalt industry, God, I'd love to do their corpus, found <laughs> the backlog of local road repairs has also reached a record 16.3 billion, up 16% from last year. The report also says local authorities are expecting to fix 2 million potholes this financial year. That's an increase of 43%. Over the last 12 months, back in October, the government announced an extra 8.3 billion of relocated HS2 funding to fix potholes across England over the next 11 years, which is enough to resurface more than 5,000 miles of road. But that is a mere 2% 
of our national road network. And All right, Stato. Holes, <laughs> <laughs> Stato. It's, 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 it's going to be my new metier <laughs> happening right <laughs> now. And Professor Hot Collins. Hot enough mm. of a bane for motorists. <laughs> Dozens of local authorities <laughs> have applied for new powers to find drivers <laughs> for traffic <laughs> offences. More than 27 million motorists are at risk of being slapped with council fines of 70 quid for driving in a bus lane or getting caught in a yellow <laughs> box junction. But let me bring you some other facts as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you wake uh, us up when you've finished? Listen, I'm merely, I look, I'm merely in part, I'm the Oracle of Delphi, I'm merely imparting <laughs> facts about roads. There was lots of mentions of billions there. The bit that I come back to, I mean, I said it at the beginning, you can step into pot, everyone's got a pothole story. If you do mm. phone in radio, I've mm. done it for years, and you're a bit short of material, either talking about parking Step fines pothole. or pothole stories, and your phone lines will go into melt. The telecom people are phoning you up saying, can you stop asking? <laughs> you're messing with the system. Everyone's got a story, and that's because it, it really is a, a serious issue, whether you're a pedestrian jumping, you know, stepping in one, where your foot goes down about 17 metres, <laughs> um, and you end up in another country, or whether you're you know, a car going over one of these things. What I find of that whole story is the last bit, the council's now getting more powers. There are 10 million people now under the um, control, if you like, of, of, of fines from local authorities and not the police. And it's the disproportionality. You know, 200 quid because you drove over a piece of concrete that's got the wrong coloured paint on it. Mm. 200, if I walked into a pub, I always say this, and, you know, kick somebody in the shins, I wouldn't get fined 200 quid. But if I go in a box junction or do a U-turn mm. on the wrong piece of road... The digital police are looking, courtesy of the local authority, and will trouser 200 quid. With regards to the, uh, uh, the roads, average electric car puts 2.24 times more weight and pressure on the roads. They're, they are a big go. part to blame for it. So they should be charged extra. You buy a brand new electric car, you still get a discount on it because you're saving the environment, but you're yep. actually damaging the roads. Damaging more. the roads. However, we also need to change the way we build our roads. Motorways are made with concrete. Our normal roads, your B roads, your all roads are made with asphalt. And asphalt is much more uh, likely to crack and then sp spit further, which is why the motorways need less, less routine work done. So if we had every road made with just concrete, yeah. we'd save a lot more money in the long run. The amount that they're spending on potholes, it's actually one of those things that costs a ridiculously high amount to do. And I was thinking, could it not be like temporary fillings? You know, we just do something to deal with it for the time being. Just that we have to fill them completely with asphalt. Because when you, when you actually see one being filled, it's like there's a whole team of geezers there, and you're like, does it really need this many people? Somebody, About 16 of them. What is happening in Big Pothole? You know, they like not big use farmer. that kind of expandable filler that like, you can put around windows or something? I think they do all, use that. That's why they're it, always... Give it to all of us. When we see a pothole, we can all just pop out and fill big in. It's society. It's I, like, do, I do yeah. find it interesting, Ian, that you mentioned that pedestrians, and then you mentioned drivers and how it damages their car. Yeah. The most, the most um, dangerous person with potholes is cyclists, yeah. right? I've got friends, and I know I'm a bore about cycling. Yeah. I've yeah. got friends who've had their collarbones broken by cycling over potholes. I've had friends who've broken their pelvis from cycling over potholes. I've nearly been killed by swerving around a massive crater pothole and effectively yeah. driving into traffic. So just spare a thought for cyclists who are going over potholes. You're not in a car, you're not cushioned no, no, by shock absorbers or I get anything. It. The moral of the story, don't ride a bike. Um, <laughs> you always say there that. Is. What about motorcyclists as well? Uh, I don't know if you clock this story. The road rage driver jailed after ramming a cyclist off the road. BMW driver who violently rammed a motorcyclist Ooh. off a bridge. I mean, this is this extraordinary. Is There's the footage there. Don't in a fit of road rage, bike. leaving him. He got serious injuries, and he was only really safe from more serious injuries by the fact that he hit the... You can see it there. He hit a load of trees, mm. which kind of cushioned his blow. If that had been concrete below there, he'd have been he'd, toast, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah. Thames Valley Police uh, released the footage showing 34-year-old Nikesh Mystery forcing the cyclist, motorcyclist onto the wrong side of the road as they drove side by side. He then squashed him between his silver BMW and a metal bridge railing while still on the wrong side of the road. And as you saw what happened there, off he went. I mean, it's just extraordinary. What was, the, so what was the sentence in? Is that a, he got four four years? Years? Yeah, over four years. I think it was just shy of five years, actually. Mm. So. Well, it's just effectively attempted murder, isn't it? I mean, You'd think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't remember what they officially uh, called it, but the fact that he landed in the in the trees and the bushes was the yeah. only saviour. I think it's astonishing. We have cameras everywhere. I think it's amazing there is footage of that incident 
We have cameras everywhere. There is Look, nowhere yeah. in this country we're not being filmed. Yeah, unless you're uh, an acid-throwing man from Newcastle, then you can't be spotted by any <laughs> yeah, camera. Yes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, we, yeah which we've Noah. given... I mean, we don't know what happened to him. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Coming up, a brand-new Bond British actor, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, is reportedly to be the next to step into the 007 shoes. We'll have the latest on that. Coming next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to abandon and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, miss it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to The Talk. Uh, the search for a new star to step in as Britain's favourite spy seems to be over. British actor Aaron Taylor Johnson has been reportedly offered the role of James Bond and is said to be signing on the dotted line this week. Taylor Johnson, who first showed off his action star abilities in teen comedy Kick Ass, will, I can never say that as a British bloke, ass, sorry, kick, kick ass, <laughs> will take up uh, the reins uh, from the reportedly de uh, recently departed 007 Daniel Craig, with production on the latest Bond instalment is ready on course to start shooting this year. Now, Taylor Johnson, who has recently starred in Bullet Train with Brad Pitt and the upcoming blockbuster The Fall Guy alongside Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling, has pipped another other long-rumoured favourites to the coveted role, including Henry Cavill, unlucky ladies, uh, Idris Elba and Tom Hardy. I mean, all of them are pretty hot, let's be honest. Uh, while Aaron Taylor-Johnson seems to be a firm favourite amongst Bond fanatics, it remains to be seen who will be confirmed by producers as the next shaken martini sipping spy. Now, I've got to say, right, for a while with James Bond, he's been this pinnacle of masculinity, and all they want to do is undermine him, don't they? 
You know, they just got a chip away. He was showing emotions in the last film. No one wants to see that. And then we've got the most, we had Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan. These are really manly names. And then we've got Aaron Taylor Johnson with a top knot. I mean, I just want, I just, I'm a man. It's worse, Jeff, it's worse than that. It's, it's worse. worse than that. It's a white man doing this job. <laughs> and I just think, you know, Pasty white boy flipping Casper got the gig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened to diversity in the film industry? We've had a lot of white bonds. White yeah. face McDougal can go away. <laughs> white face McDougal. Yeah. That sounds we like don't a good need this yeah. anymore. <laughs> Where is it? We I mean, thought Idris, Idris might get the Idris, gig. Idris would have been a charming more in the Pierce Brosnan type mm. Roger He's Moore too style. Old, yeah. It's a Obviously. national scandal. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Look, yeah. um, Pierce Brosnan, <laughs> Sean Connery, Roger Moore. George Lazenby were not masculine, masculine men. They're masculine men. What about Timothy Dalton? Timothy Dalton. They're, they're men in terms of Sean we're, Connery, we're, we're, mad, yeah, we're mad men who sit around uh, drinking whiskey and objectifying mm. women, but they weren't physically specimens of strength. Daniel Craig transformed the Bond role into now it's this is what an, an ex special arms forces guy mm. looks like. Aaron Taylor Johnson has that kind of physique. He, he's been in Marvel as an Avenger. He's now playing the second one, uh, Craig, Craven the Hunter. Yeah. He has the physique to be that. Played it However, in Collins in Talk TV. He played it in yeah, Collins in that. Talk TV, yeah. the movie. <laughs> there was no sequel. Um, <laughs> but, but I suppose in one way, he's got that Bond thing of he's not super, super famous going into it. Oh, Aaron Taylor Johnson is super, super famous in the US, which is why I don't think he'll get it. Hey, uh -huh. My mother-in-law doesn't know he is, and that's how I define it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Maureen. <laughs> yeah. but, but the point about Bond is he's always been the hard-drinking, misogynistic, sexist, kind of, you know, violent, yeah. um, driving yeah. very dangerously kind of guy. It doesn't that's matter whether right. they're super masculine. If Aaron Taylor Johnson gets this, he's going to be really woke and really sensitive. And as you say, it'll just completely ruin the 007 vibe. They just ruin it every time. <laughs> well, but, uh, but apparently the Broccoli's like to get a bargain for Bond, so I'm reliably informed, even though he has had a decent career in he Hollywood, he'll, he'll be cheap enough. Apparently, oh. that's all it, apparently that's all it comes down to. Nope. Cheap Bond, McBond. <laughs> right, now it's time for Small Talk. <laughs> Ian. Yes, there is a village clock in a lovely part of Devon, John St John, the Baptist Church, the clock tower, there it is, you can see there, in Witheridge. Uh, it's chimed for 150 years, but it's now been silenced. There was a single Ooh. complaint. One, this often happens. One person complained and said the noise interrupted their sleep. But was it got, one of those ones that does it every quarter hour? I think that was the problem. I'd have, yeah. been, I'd have been that person. Smash it down. <laughs> <laughs> have you yeah. ever stayed in a B&B near one of those places? Remove yeah. its donger, I yeah, would say. Despite a local plenty. petition calling for the beloved clock to chime, Again, the church had to install a £2,000 silencer. <laughs> Isn't that just remove, just remove the thing? Collins, I've got to say, that story was even more boring than the one you said about the concrete stuff earlier. It's I merely... Um, don't shoot the message. I, I almost JJ. want to walk off set on that. What have you got for us? I'm, oh, much better than that. I can't but, wait. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not next. No, okay. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> well, look, next. Well, if you want to clock off early, um, you could actually oh. just go to the top of a skyscraper. We're not far from the shard here. And because of the laws of relativity and other big science stuff that I definitely understand, <laughs> is the higher up you are, basically, your working day is a little bit shorter. And I know this because I've seen Interstellar. So there's some sort of mathematical <laughs> thing whereby you'd have a slightly shorter working day. The only bad news is that it would take... 1.1 million years. It's such a tiny, tiny difference. It would take 1.1 million years to bank an extra second. So it's, uh, you know, you... you, you to I bank a second? Need... To bank a second. And that's your story? 1.1 <laughs> million years? <laughs> I mean, James Bond gets emasculated, I get emasculated. What is going on here? Yeah, yeah so, well, I'm getting accused of yeah. telling dicey stories. I was, <laughs> was going to say 1.1 million years or one of Ian Collins' stories. <laughs> 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 Very good. Very Don't reason. clap, Alice. <laughs> that was great. That was great, dear. Where's though? HR when you need it? <laughs> so, um, this is a good one, actually. Much <laughs> better, better than, be after than this. Actor Ewan McGregor, he's married to an actress. They had to film a sex scene, but they couldn't just do it themselves. Mm. They had to have an intimacy coach. You know what that is? I'm sure you know what it is, Jeff. You use them all the time. Yeah. An intimacy coordinator. They come on set, make sure the performers are comfortable with what's being shot during the sexual scene. So mm. you make sure that the you know the male actor isn't getting a getting an Ian Collins on sets, mm. and you know the woman you beneath. Oh, I can't believe getting you're referring to this on, sets, on television. I literally and cannot the believe you said comfortable that. with it and all. You know nothing's getting pushed anywhere. It doesn't want to go. <laughs> but they're husband and wife. It's the couple. 
Ewan McGregor and Elizabeth Winstead, they're married. But Why how, would you possibly... How long have they been married, though? This is the thing. I think anybody the who's in wife. middle age... The new if, wife. If you've been in middle age and you've been married a while, we could all do with an intimacy coordinator. If anything, a cheerleader egging you on, saying, well, do it, don't just watch a box set tonight, <laughs> get stuck in. Well, here's the thing. McGregor, who, as you say, Emma, is Mr Woke, he says he does it not for himself, mm. not for his wife, who he loves to make love to, I assume, uh, but for the professionalness of the crew. He doesn't, doesn't want to upset the crew. Well, what, by being what? too good at I it. I think it would almost be more <laughs> personal, though, filming a scene with your real-life partner, with Definitely. your real-life wife yeah. or husband. And I can actually, see why they're doing this, And actually. actually, I can completely see why he said that. It would be really embarrassing just to go, yeah, normal. to watch an actual couple <laughs> yes. pretending to get it on. That'd yeah. be really... Uh, it'd be like watching Mum and Dad. Do you not it'd be think so this was just a cheeky yes. way to introduce another person into the relationship? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think that's I what think was going on there. <laughs> speak of the crew... You we talked about male genitals enough in this programme yeah. today. The Emma. sun flashing and the... Gosh, now we've got a bikini story. Elizabeth Hurley finds it more relaxing when her son, Damien Hurley, takes her bikini photos mm. rather than using a, a professional photographer. The actress has revealed that her son shot the images for her fashion brand, Elizabeth Hurley Beach. Hurley's son recognises the controversy, but he says, to us, it's not a thing. It's just part of business. She takes my photos, I take hers. Do you, know how quiet, do you notice how quiet we went when the Liz Hurley images flashed up? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm wife of once deadly were focused. quiet and yes. listening. Yes. Keep going with the Hurley. I think, I think it's lovely. I mean, she is incredible. She's, what, 83 or something, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's about she 50. Looks, she, no, she, she, joking about it, she looks amazing. Uh, yes. She's got a very striking looking son. They've obviously got a nice close relationship and he takes the pics. It, she, it is and, weird though, and, a bit. And to it's be a fair, bit weird. Is, he doesn't need to take the pictures. They can just give it to my mate, Catherine. She'll do a nice Photoshop job for them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get the arm from it, wonky. Turn up. Yeah. We, can try, we can try and sound evolved, but it is just a bit weird. I mean, I'm it more, is a bit weird. Yeah, it's like. Well, the no, whole... he's, a prof he's a budding photographer and director as well. Oh, Still a bit weird. in the family. Gives him a bit of work. He can afford it. It's just Nepo photographers. Yeah, yeah. It is, in that case. Nepo, right, Nepo. who here spies on their neighbours? Anyone going to when admit you say it? Spy? What do you yeah. mean? Sit in their lot? I mean, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that would be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. well, it's okay to put a, like a microphone just down the. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. In the, yeah. You know, yeah. A bit of curtain twitching. Yeah, yeah. A couple of CCTV cameras. Yeah. Like, oh, no. Long, uh, long lens. Well, you might look out the window if you hear a mm. noise. All right. So a new poll has found that we, apparently, we Brits, are so determined to keep up appearances that we spy on our neighbours to see what they're doing, see what they've invested. You know, have they built a new conservatory? You know, are they splashing the cash? So this survey found that four million Brits made hasty purchases as a result of spying on their neighbours and wanting to keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> Some spending ten grand on stuff on their own house because they've seen their neighbours doing that. And apparently Manchester, Mancunians, are the nosiest neighbours, mm. followed by Sheffield and Newcastle. Yes, the Northerners. Conservative is, is quite a hasty yeah, purchase. Yeah. yeah. So there you have it, <laughs> nosy neighbours. That's all we've got time for here on The Talk. Thank you to our panellists, Emma Wolfe, Ian Collins, he's back at three tomorrow, JJ Anasabi and Jeff Norcott. Thank you. Good night. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. 
may might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the